Yeah. All right. So this is our Libertarian Crusaders episode number three, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be on the debate. Uh, the Democrats essentially wholesale auction of America <laughs> 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 to uh, foreigners, to third worlders, to people who are not of the same culture. Um I used to think sometimes, like, how do they go about it, in, like in Kapistan, right? How do we do? What do we do with government buildings, right? We sell them, but you know, what about bidders that are outside of America, right? I'm sure they'll come up with the highest bidder. There's like couple would say, like, well, you would auction up the property, like these federal buildings and stuff like that, right. but they would kind of generally go up to the highest bidder, and maybe somebody in like Saudi Arabia or something like that will just kind of go ahead and buy up all these things from us. Um, I think maybe. It would go then instead of that maybe immediate homesteading of the people closest to those properties. I'd imagine like if you're uh, if you work at a post office and uh, no more monopoly, go ahead and try to run your post office. But there's no monopoly. You've been already working in that building. Do your best. You know, uh, very likely that stuff will fail in a couple months. But <laughs> well, they're not backed up by the monopoly of violence any longer. Right. Uh, I guess I'd like to start off first by saying uh, Benvenidos, amigos. Para hablar. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Gracias a hablar en la donde biblioteca. Speaking of libraries. It was, uh, even I was, I mean, I could t slightly tell that Beto was not speaking very good Spanish. Like, right. And I don't know any Spanish. So. A uh, Booker it's cringe. Uh, was amazing, and like <laughs> like he's practicing this in his head. He's probably going through this. Like I got to show I can also speak Spanish. Uh, and no, he butchered it. Like he was like, oh. yeah, Booker butchered everything. So oh. he was he was talking like um like like trying to do English word, but putting like esa at the end of it, like look esa, you know, like just kind of like a uh, pidgin or something like that, a perverted. Spanish English. It was yeah. very uh, cringy to watch and hear. Wow. I wasn't even paying attention. I was, when he started talking in Spanish, I was just like, I just started drifting away. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, you're running for presidency yeah. here, right? Mexico? <laughs> I mean, uh, I commented to to my, uh, my brother Phil. It's just that, like, this kind of vindicates, and I, nobody said this, but is uh, Melania Trump, who gave a speech in English to, like, the RNC or just, like, millions of people on TV. And, I mean... She's, she knows like six languages and it's really difficult to speak in front of people because when you see these guys trying to do it, you're like, yeah, that's when it's not your first language, it's kind of tough. Right. <laughs> uh, but they've had coaches. Like I could tell like um, with Beto, they're trying to do the same Obama, Obama cadence to him. Like he does his pauses and he tries to, I mean, they have professionals behind him telling oh, yeah. him how to speak and what to say and just like memorizes and say it over and over and over again. Uh, <laughs> And even still, and even still, <laughs> they still fuck it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I find that the person that was being used as the dummy back for the most part was Beto, because uh, you can see how they situate everyone, like who their darlings are, right? And it's usually the person at the center, and at the center of the first debate would be uh, Beto, uh, who was right next to him, uh, Warren. So right, those two are like the two like people highlighted by the media over and over again. So you can see why the other people would want to take jabs, at least at Beto, uh, to take him down and take the spotlight off of him uh, and kind of leave Warren, I guess, alone for the most part. She did a pretty good job of shooting herself in the foot constantly. She got more time than most people, and every time it was, I have a plan repeatedly over and over again and basically the plan was oh i'm gonna spend a massive amount of money to get nothing done i thought it would have been interesting if <clears throat> somebody re-recorded the debates with like a little tally of just like cha-ching cha-ching like that keeps going up <laughs> as they say different plans Every right promise. and it was just like okay by the time like by the end of that one minute statement they were up uh, you know the debt went up another two trillion dollars and that would be all like that would be that would be the fact checking showing how much your taxes would rise in comparison to that <laughs> well i mean we all knew that was going to happen i mean second bernie said well on the second night that you know middle class is going to raise more taxes I mean, they're all like that they're all going to agree to that even the first night people right you know? bernie's right. finding it difficult to differentiate himself from everyone else everyone's trying to do the race of who can give away the most free stuff to one another right uh elizabeth warren to mentioning uh 
she mentioned uh, was like talking about people who's trying to help and stuff. I mean, she mentioned Latinx <laughs> people. That's like one of the dumbest things as a Spanish speaker. I have a mother who's Spanish, but uh, I also have a deer stand. Uh, someone who <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's I, I find it to be very difficult for a lot of even Spanish speakers to say these kinds of words. Like here's a sentence I found: If you're going to replace like the O's and the A's to because Spanish is a gender language, okay. and so there's different words you kind of say for this sort of stuff, and they want to replace the genderness of it to be uh, non, I guess, inclusive. And so the way you would talk then, instead of saying los niños fueron a la escuela a ver a sus amigos, you would say lex nenex fueron a lex escuelex a ver a sus amigas. Oh yeah, wow. it butch yeah. yeah, it butchers up the entire yeah. language, right? Uh, and that's and that's her. That's her trying to you know say like she's down with this whole social justice stuff and is down with this whole, I guess, uh, false gender discrimination. Uh, eventually, uh, who was it that brought up Justin Ca Julian Castro brought up uh, gender pay gap. Yes. Yep. And he br he also brought up uh, reproductive justice. And he is qu he's quoted as saying, um, in part, what that means is that just. Reproductive justice is what that means is that just because a woman or let's also not forget someone in the trans community a trans female is poor doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose and it, it was one of those weird head scratching moments where even Bill Maher called him out because it was like all right what? so if you don't have a uterus then you probably can't have. I mean, friend. it's good news for our friend uh, Kyle Wagner over at Punk Rock Libertarians. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, well, how, how does that work? Do they pretend that they're pregnant and then uh, they're able to have the whole experience of pretending to kill their own baby? And uh, <laughs> much. all right, it's like all right, you know, we pretend there's a cervix in there too. You know, how, how far does this go for medical care? Pretend pap smear. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is, is, but you know, make sure you come back uh, next year for your real, um, what do they do uh, for, for guys? Um, physical. Physical, right? Yeah. It's the, uh, it's the fiction, like, you're changing the language in Spanish, right? And we're changing the language in English, so we'll say, instead of she is, we'll say they is, like, like right. Vince pointed out. And uh, it's just, it's a weird, you know, you're not, you're not, and you, supposedly, they is, is the correct way to say it but we it doesn't sound right and something doesn't sound right to the average person probably wow. i'm surprised an actual spanish speaker support that i'm like you're butchering your entire language just for like a, a minority a minority minority of the entire planet i'm just like <laughs> yeah that's a little, a little weird yeah the entire language because not just it's right. all the countries in central south america pretty much speak spanish Every, pretty much everything's gendered there's a lot of <laughs> european languages that are kind of like that every like uh items are gendered uh so it's it's, uh, butchering and just uh, democrating the whole entire uh, way people speak. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, the 1984 where they kind of, people forget certain words and kind of redefine sort of things. And then maybe it's a way to kind of create a sense of like being at lost because uh, uh, you, you're never right, but you're never wrong. Um, and it just kind of depends on whoever's dictating that at the time. Um, kind of like a lot of these laws, right? So like, uh, Obstruction of justice. No one can really define that. It's just, it is what it is when they kind of feel like throwing something on you if nothing else sticks. Um, but yeah, the right. Julian Castro was also talking about uh, going to help women. Uh, his grandmother was also, or his mother was also a hard worker and found it very unfair and unjust that, you know, that women are not paid equal to men and that he's going to usher in a uh, new legislation um, despite the fact there already is. Uh, legislation uh, multiple multiple all right 1963 act Amazing. of uh, equal pay act that's it's already against the law <laughs> obama did something too i don't remember what it was called it did, did the exact same thing we have a lot pretty much every state has one so it was like right no but he's gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> of all the people before him he's finally gonna do it right you think this is like a dead horse like they would let go of this but like everyone's kind of like agreeing it's like yeah, yeah. it's the <laughs> sacred cow you know you can't like just when julian castro says that it's similar it's well who's going to be the one to no none of us are going to actually disagree with that until he goes up and faces trump at which at which point it's trump's gonna shred him because right. he's gonna be like what no men can't have kids <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be it what a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> this guy i that's win yeah, I think that's what a lot of them I notice are 
trying to also correct themselves. They don't want to also, like, if they get nominated, everything they said during the debate is going to be used against them. Mm. So you can find, like, Elizabeth Warren trying to skirt around the question about, like, gun rights. You know, what are, what are you going to do? And she's like, well, you know, there's uh, collectors out there. we got to respect that, you know, and just uh, there's different ways to go about it. And it's like, and they're like, it's like, no, what, what are you going to do about it? And she still kind of skirts and avoids uh, response to gun rights. Well, we all did that. Well, because... Except uh, for your boy... Eric Swalwell. Like oh, he's the nuke, the oh, gun owners yes. guy. <laughs> oh, is he the nuke guy? He's the he twi- <laughs> used Twitter and he said something about nuking gun owners. Wow. Yeah. yeah, he he uh he basically proposed the gun buyback slash we're gonna ban all weapons in the United States. Right, and so you're you're gonna have to sell your gun back to the government because they're gonna be banned. So, right. What a great. I wonder what the price for your guns will be. What a like, quick way to <laughs> usher in a true. Uh, is it a civil war? A, a separation of culture war or yeah. something like that? Uh, a federal overthrow. A federal <laughs> overthrow. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy who was talking about like uh, the jabs they were doing at Biden because they see him as a leading contender uh, in the second part of the debate. And it was, he's the one who talks about passing the torch. And it's like, you know, you're... <laughs> <laughs> that shit was weird. He did it the entire debate. All right. It was like, pass, uh, pass the torch. He said this a long time ago. I remember when he said this back, I don't know, the 70s. And uh, look at this now. Uh, he still hasn't, uh, you know, he's, I guess Biden talking about all the stuff he wants to do. He's like, why haven't you done it yet? You've been in here right. longer than everyone else. Right. But doesn't it strike you as that entitled millennial attitude where it's he's saying well, it's my turn you know <laughs> Joe right. Biden stop hogging the spotlight it's my turn now and uh and you're like buddy you haven't done anything you I mean you're a representative from the bay area right and you think that you're going to run the country now <laughs> he's uh I, it's weird cuz like they have their favorites and not just the way they present him on stage but also the title they still convey to him uh vice president Biden, right? He's not VP former. anymore. They, they don't even say former. <laughs> they never said former? No, no, that. yeah, yeah. Put the mic a little higher. No, yeah, they don't even they don't even say that. They just uh, every time they're called, they call him um, Vice President Biden. Even the uh, I don't know why the, his competitors will call him sometimes Vice President Biden. Right. You don't want to do that, right? Now you're you're putting an air like you acknowledge like he is presidential material, right? Right. Uh, against where you want to be, right? I do like sometimes, like Booker will say, when I'm president, um, or sometimes the look of other people's faces when they say that, like Elizabeth Warren's like, no, that's going to be me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I guess some uh, weird highlights would be uh, Yang only getting, what, two questions? No, he had a couple. He had, uh, uh, NBC New York did like a video showing the time lengths of every candidate. He had like, I think, four or five minutes out of the whole thing. He claimed that his microphone was turned I off. I heard about that. Did, did he? Does he have any proof about it? I, I, I guess you would have to see a clip of him ta- talking into his mic, and then I doubt nothing that that exists. I don't think he's uh, like I could get it that he's respectable, that he's not going to interrupt, that he's gonna do like he's like. Well, you have two, you have two seconds to say what you want, and he did. It's like, and the guy's like, "Oh well, thanks for your uh, brief explanation there." Uh, but the thing is, uh, when you're up against like someone like Trump, he'll talk over you. Uh, he'll interrupt you. Wrong. Uh, wrong, yeah. <laughs> like Jeb Bush, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, like, there's people saying, like, you shouldn't go down to that level, and, and I'm not going to go do that. <laughs> and that's why I got kicked out. Yeah. Um, but I noticed that that's, that's a debate tactic. Uh, sometimes someone will interrupt, and I think the only person that was really good at pushing forward with that was uh, not Kamala Harris. This other girl, the military one, Gillibrand, Tulsi, Tulsi, Gabbard. yeah. Oh. So she, someone will try to talk over her, and she will just keep going, increase her tone, and just kind of drown the other person out. And that's a good tactic because somebody just generally wants to go over you to kind of throw another jab at you. Uh, but if you don't know how to handle that, then you're just going to get steamrolled over. Right. Yeah. So Tulsi, then she was. She's the. I guess there's different fanboys of her, and some people don't like her. Um, but generally, I guess among the libertarian community, she's the anti-war candidate. So there's people giving her some props, I guess, for at least saying something right. that's acknowledging the, the war issue. <laughs> I guess if you're on stage and you have that 
media attention, it is uh, interest good to bring that up. We've been at war from one filled regime to the next. I'm paraphrasing for here. Decades. Yeah. For decades. Yeah. And her experience in there is good to kind of remind people of that. Um, but, you know, she also has a strong uh, anti-gun record and mm-hmm. her voting against uh, gun owners and trying to uh, what, what her p- p- position is for reinstating a federal ban on military style assault weapons in high capacity magazines. Mm-hmm. So right. that's another way to start a war here locally and domestically, <laughs> I would imagine. imagine. Right. She has great hair. That's all I can give her. <laughs> Fabulous hair. Fabulous hair. Got to hand that to her. I mean, out of all of them, she's like, the least horrible that has the chance of winning compared to all the other ones like you know we know that we, we all know the top 10 that have no chance and that they're the best ones to win because they're not gonna get anything done but out of the 10 the 10 that can actually get something like win man she's not the she's not the worst she did win like what all the internet polls something like that i mean i think yang won one of the internet polls too oh, which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. i think it's kind of loaded you know it's like <laughs> right wing people just like picking the person that they would like to run against maybe but he's right. one of the worst he's one of the worst yang yes uh what are, what are you <laughs> talking his about plan? his uh, defenders the can be pretty interesting <laughs> yes <laughs> they <clears throat> constantly move the goalpost and they have all sorts of arguments that uh have no <laughs> they're even, dead ends it's not even just that his defenders it's like a lot of people that want free stuff because everyone hears the ubi plan it's like oh yeah and get free shit on top of the free shit that we're already going to get because you know he hasn't really explained how it's going to get rid of all the other shit it's like oh well you know you, you can choose between doing one and doing the other i'm like i don't yeah. think it's gonna be like that for very long it's gonna be like two months later you can do both <laughs> at the same time which that's what's gonna happen right he's only gonna tax it two thousand dollars to make sure everyone gets a thousand dollars. i love his head cock to the side like nervous like i've never done this before in a debate so i'm kind of nervous and i'm gonna say that it, it didn't seem like he was very comfortable up there right and uh his fanboys on 4chan i'm sure will completely <laughs> overlook that but <laughs> i mean what, what do you guys think about accelerationists no, so nice. like uh, acceleration would be well there's nothing we can do uh, about changing the government is just going to keep going bigger and bigger until it implodes uh so we might as well assist and the suicide and grow the biggest programs that we can until it gets there and we can do it faster by doing going in that direction. 4D chess. That's the first time I ever heard of that. You never heard of that? Yeah, yeah. I've okay. never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? You so, need to spend more time on the internet. Yeah. Uh, I'll with that. It's accessible already. <laughs> so like, these would be the people who say, yeah, welfare is great. Everyone be on welfare. Yeah. Uh, get all the programs because uh, then it'll be too unsustainable that the government collapses. I would say in ways I'm kind of an accelerationist because I think that when they restrict guns, that riles a bunch of people up. I tend to think that this is a good thing uh, to uh, mm-hmm. like make people advocate for more freedom. Like It's obvious. When the empire squeezes, just like in Star Wars, when, the harder the empire squeezes, the more people want to resist it. So if this is a question of tyranny versus freedom, when tyranny starts to squeeze down, that's when people really start to like look at what actual freedom is. Yeah, but that's a movie. And the people in that movie had, <laughs> had some measure of dignity and self-respect. A lot of people in America don't Why? have that anymore. There's spaceships. I mean, <laughs> that's <laughs> be true. Space Why are these movies so powerful sometimes? Because they have a story arc, right, that sort of mirrors things that goes on in reality. There's that um, revolutionary hero guy I heard about who died who is like 78 years old, saw the British, went out there shooting, sh- you know, shot down six of them. Eventually, they shot him back, uh, bayoneted him. Uh, but he survived uh, to fight again wow. and uh, lived for like another like 15-some years. Wow. Trooper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would imagine like like – having that chance i guess if we ever get into our old days like all right fuck it acceleration yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> right. i want to get terminal cancer right. i'm good <laughs> <laughs> i want something cool on my tombstone um so that's what acceleration is want uh, i mean it is inevitable there's the economic calculation problem uh there is also that uh many of these government programs once they're created it's difficult to get rid, get rid of them, of them yeah. right um so, like, uh, at the effect of Republicans shrinking down the size of government. Never. Right. Uh, the effect of, like, uh, Ron Paul, God bless him, like, saying no, uh, still hasn't uh, The process shrunk. vote. Right. It's not it's just one guy. reality. Right. So, there is an inevitability where it, it will happen, but at the same time, uh, 
the problem with acceleration is, is most of the people who advocate I've, I've come to find are people who don't have, uh, not you, uh, don't have like a uh, property to be right. taxed for this. I say, when I say that I'm the acceleration only on this one topic, but my personal like is, I don't feel like my voice is connected to what happens in politics. So what I do is take steps in my personal life to try to live right liberate. right 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 and in this context it will exactly. be it will be generally people who have no i find no property no they don't have, right they no, don't have they don't have yeah. a good skin steady income the they don't have skin in the game right they don't have right. uh anything that they would be taxed on so They're yeah of homeless. course <laughs> you keep saying, yeah. is that what you're uh, saying or grifters Whoa. uh so they would enjoy all this stuff but they don't realize that it'll be everyone else who to do pay or de demanded the money and resources come from that will suffer and will be squeezed uh, tremendously. Like, yeah, even if I'm an accelerationist, I would still, you know, and I'm not, but it, you're, you're still f causing all these people to have to deal with the ramifications of this socialist policy, which ends up causing suffering. And thus, you know, I would say it's, uh, I'm, I don't want to cause, you know, we know that socialism causes suffering. So why, why, you know, test it any more than we already have. Right. It's just so bad defeatist enough. attitude. It's giving up <laughs> versus, you know, uh, picking yourself up by the bootstraps and educating people and Ooh. building community or whatever. Would Venezuela be an example of a <laughs> accelerationist uh, right. byproduct? And, and, and what is their solution now? Right. You know, how are they going to come back from do that? I wanna really, do you really want to eat zoo animals and bamboo shoots <laughs> and these creeks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're going we're to we're go there as a country, but I mean, when you were talking about people suffering, I think they've got... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> I think the... Um, dang it. The point was, uh, people are suffering. They don't. They don't care as long as they can see other people suffering as much as them. It's so, like when people talk about, oh, a church doesn't pay property tax, and people are like, oh, well, the church should pay. It's like, how come you don't say you don't want to pay property tax the same way as the church? So right. they just want to like stack their pain on someone else so they all feel equal. So I don't. I don't think people care if they suffer mm -hmm. in this country for the most part. Right. If they do. They say that. And I always just say, um, why don't uh, we have the same privileges as the church? You can say, right? Right. <laughs> and not pay any property taxes mm -hmm. as well. Right. Why is this? Yeah. Why is this one entity unique? And they have this special, um, you know, First Amendment privilege that the rest of us, for whatever reason, don't. Yeah. Right. So that's uh, the Yang Gang. That's acceleration. I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, why not $2,000 a month? You know, why, <laughs> what, why do you hate the, I don't know, the poor middle class <laughs> i'm sure they could use two thousand dollars more yeah, i did talk about someone about that one of the reasons why UB, the ubi wouldn't work like in this country because i mean our currency is already inflating at large amounts so it's like one thousand is gonna be like 100 then you have to give you ten thousand because the, the numbers are not gonna stop at one thousand it's not possible why wouldn't the, why wouldn't you if you're a landowner or own property raise the rent by an extra thousand? <laughs> yeah. i know an extra thousand is coming to your paycheck <laughs> <laughs> i like an extra thousand in my pocket uh, just, just the rent would be everything. You know, all the everything, stores. Yeah. Oh, you know, just jacked up $20. A thousand dollar cheeseburger. <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid to admit that um, I may have responded to one of Andrew Yang's tweets. And I, <sighs> he said, $1,000. He said, I will give $1,000 a month for the next 12 months free to someone who retweets this and follows me by July 4th. And so I retweeted and uh, followed him. So, I mean, I didn't do it because I believe in him you know right i'm not sorry i just want the money that's money we can use to buy guns and better fund our militia right. to overthrow the government right Have right you yeah. ever like given someone a thousand and they've done that is, that is that a true thing Has that happened he, he claims you know you know he, yeah, like any it. politician he'll probably yeah, back yeah. back yeah. off that later but <laughs> yang gang i saw a meme of a person <laughs> uh requesting a thousand dollars from andrew yang on facebook you know how that go they get it facebook you know request money thing i don't like that guy i think <laughs> i think he's the worst he's one of the worst he's my top three i guess in terms Who? of not being liked yang yang he's so, top three so bernie sanders though he's <laughs> supposed to be in second um but during the debate i just didn't get the impression that he was so, relevant at all he's nothing new, like they're all the same as him now he's got nothing that sets him apart anymore i don't think hmm Oh, that was what the article I was just talking about before we started. Like there was an article saying that apart from Bernie Sanders, in terms of you know getting out of the race that people want among Democrats, and you know Bill De Blasio, he was, yeah. he was top too, man. I guess nobody wants him anymore. He's not far left enough. He's too old. Does uh, vocation up. schools uh, count as student loans? Like we get loans for that? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Mr. Uh, Elim- I like that everyone's like, yeah, I'll eliminate student loans. Everyone's kind of on board oh, with yeah. that. Uh, sure, why not? He's like, you're not, I'm not, you're not, I'm not going to let you uh, out Bernie me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the hesitation. Like someone was talk- talking about, uh, raise your hand if you would give uh, free health care to uh, illegal uh, immigrants or resource yeah. invaders. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, well, people start raising their hand. The last person I think was Yang. Biden was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> he looked around first to make sure nobody else. Right. <laughs> who would have been fine if it was just two people? But then it was like, Far, yeah. Far, yes, oh. Biden, did you raise your hand? <laughs> yeah, yes, I did. <laughs> and, and that's incredible. I mean, that really is, uh, that's the entire world virtually. Anybody right. who steps foot yes. here can start to get free stuff. And right. They want to decriminalize, you know, coming across the border, which would like, that would incentivize how many people to come? Everyone. This Everyone. Is, the border would be full of nothing but corpses. There'd be no river because the, cor- the river would be covered over in corpses. <laughs> I have a theory that, uh, that I don't know, that some Democrats set that up, this picture of this uh, dead father and kid. You think so? It was just happened like a day or two before the debate, right? Weird for them to have somebody come there and take that picture. It's kind of like the setups with like uh, a Cortez standing up, looking at a parking lot. Oh, God. You know, oh, I heard about that. Right. And it's kind of staged. Well, I mean, that uh, one's kind of like, okay, we can prove that. But like, I don't like going into like things like that. It's like, oh, yeah, they just like left these bodies here. We found it. And this guy. I mean, either way, like, such a horrible image uh, it was. being shown on national TV all the time. Right. For, over and over. It's and, just. Uh, disturbing and they, well, use it, here's they, an, they use it as political ammunition just pew, pew, pew. right well now you can come and get our free stuff um what there was uh i was reading some of these reports like some of the people coming over there one person has quarantined because they have ebola uh it just takes one person to start an outbreak uh, one person got quarantined for having the mumps uh, a little girl 10 year old girl they found uh 10 semen samples uh in oh. her uh so you find they, there's like there's like this uh testing being done to see like if these are the real parents like 30 percent of them so far that they found are not what they found is some of these people most all of these people are buying these kids uh and then taking them with them uh and of course they're getting raped along the way they're being sex trafficked because when you get across the border maybe you can get some kind of uh mercy crossing or something like that with Aww. these kids uh don't split up our family right don't, right yeah, yeah that's not real real family right right uh so you find uh, many of this stuff happening because what you have down there in the border is an open border situation. You have a lot of people that can easily kind of get through. Uh, there's somebody who was talking about, well... Oh, it's not easy. I've, had, I've, I've talked to illegal immigrants about... I, I, one of the, uh, I'm not going to say where he's at, but yeah. <laughs> someone, I, someone I know. Tell us. <laughs> he was explaining to me how he, he came in like the bottom of a van. People were dying around the ends across the deserts and coyotes and rattlesnakes. Everything was hot and cold. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. It's horrifying. And that method, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, people, there's, there's yeah. people will fly here sometimes and overstay their visas. People right. will have uh, fake marriages. I think there's mm-hmm. this uh, Muslim congresswoman who has found that she married her brother. Oh, uh, so that's he can. Right. They don't know whether that's true or not because I guess you know. I've heard a lot of these tales, and yeah. it, it matches up exactly from what I've <laughs> uh, what I, I know. I wouldn't. Be there's more that. and more uh, information, right? Always coming to. To bear, uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. but like, cool. if you were to know, like, if these people were know were, were to know, like, you couldn't even make it, they wouldn't risk it, right? There, there's no point. Uh, I, I use uh, Israel as an example. When they found, there was like these uh, these things where, like, before the wall went up, like twenty thousand crossings, thirty thousand, and then when the wall finally came up, boom, <laughs> zero. Hmm. Like maybe one in two years. Like no one tries it because it's impossible. You yeah. don't no longer have. Uh, this weird thing where like eight out of ten women are being raped by other Mexicans, uh, they're trying to risk their lives and kidnapping other kids just to make something that's uh, you, you can never get through, right? Uh, so that's some, something that they don't talk about. They'll talk about they'll, they'll point a picture of this little kid dying and say we got to save these kids. At the same time, when they bring up like reproductive rights, eh, let's go ahead and uh, support the killing of our own babies and kids here in America. Oh, yeah, I'm okay with abortion, kind of. Uh, I mean, I, I like I had a, I had a whole conversation with this like hardcore feminist about it. You know, was like, oh, they, they convinced you. No, 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 <laughs> it's not, well, it's not that. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always had my own kind of like stance on abortion. You know, like all the the general things, like all oh, raping and incest, even though like, that's, that's extremely rare. But I was like, I think it's okay up to like the first week of the second trimester. I was like, you get three months to decide. If you can't come up with something, you just got to go for it. I mean, that was my like stance. She was like. I agree with that. I'm like, you know, or remove the like less than one percent stuff, and you have your ninety nine percent. But even that's not enough, though. I mean, even that, which is like a pretty sizable admission, you know, a lot of them will say no. That's like not acceptable. It has to be throughout the entire. I mean, I I feel like 
more people would agree with that. But like, cause no, nobody has that conversation more. It's either like, there's this super far, you know, like what they were doing in Alabama. Did you actually read that bill? Yeah. How they were describing abortion, like the Holocaust and Khmer Rouge, and then, you know, the stop killing fields in Cambodia. They like don't consider uh, babies people. Yeah. So. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't believe that, but they did say the whole reason is for the states. You know, it, trying to advance late term abortions, even though most women don't support late term abortions. And I talked to her about that. She was like, "Yeah, I don't agree with late term abortions they just either." Passed a bill here in Virginia, our home state of Virginia. No, they can they kill a baby. No, they, they didn't, didn't pass. pass. It got. No, it was in New York that it passed, and they tried to implement it here in Virginia, but it didn't go through. I was right. It was yeah, 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 yeah. Thing was Our governor was talking about trying to do right, it. Trying to say he's the one that went on the radio and right. said all that goofy fucking shit that was creepy, <laughs> and he's a uh, like a like a doctor, right? And he was, yeah, and not only was he a doctor, he was like a PD, right? He was a pediatric, pediatric. kids doctor. Yeah, it's fuck creepy. Wait, what's that oh, and then all of a sudden the blackface thing came out and they forgot about all Nothing. the abortion thing okay. and it was well that was probably about... why the blackface stuff came out right exactly right? somebody had to divert that it. wow no, they, were, they were sitting on it and they were like after he said that that really pissed me off right i'm gonna release this now right Ooh. <laughs> but i'm pretty sure that the abortion did not go through here in virginia but it did in new york new york state right oh, uh sure. but you know you have um what is it alabama Bama pushing that, and then you had like this weird California thing of response where, like, all right, our government workers can't go there. I was like, great, don't California or Alabama. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about this guy. He's a pediatric neurologist. That's not just like a reg- regular pediatrist. He's like, he's a top brain. Top right. Right. Like, yeah. like, right. Holy crap, he's like the top of the top. Right. Oh, weird. but he said that we're going to huh. have a decision and maybe with another doctor, but not another doctor if that's too burdensome. Or, <laughs> no, the reason why they say that is because every, usually a lot of these uh, people have a doctor that they're really friends with and really close with that will say like hey i really heard and i really need these pills like i'll write you that medication hey uh so you have then if it's just one doctor your personal doctor of course he'll sign off everything else that you want if you have a second pair of eyes they would be able to see like yeah this is not correct this is not what's going on well, if they work together like tag team, then then you're screwed. We're gonna have three people in there. They have a team of people. It seems more, uh, <laughs> or just don't kill your babies. <laughs> Simple, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that was an interesting thing that they kept talking about. You know, showcase this kid, this kid mm-hmm. dying, save other people's children, but here we advocate uh, killing our own. And I think that's kind of weird. I mean, I'm okay. You know, like I said, I'm okay with abortion, but I rather like even though like they talked about you know people using coat wire hangers, which I'm, I'm honestly I'm pretty sure that's like in the minority women that ever tried that. But yeah, I'm okay with you know having abortions in like regular hospitals. Now it's in the middle of you know, you're in a room, so push you down the stairs like Family Guy. When you find a girl that you want to marry, uh, you'll feel different. <laughs> now I'm probably still in the exact same way. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to change. She'll, yeah, you'll be like let's I'm not. not, not, not you'll be like let's that. not let's not kill our babies. Well, right? yeah, why would you, why not, would, why would not, you kill your babies? I mean, I'm saying that about me, but I like other people. What is personal? Because eventually that's kind of where it goes to, right? Yeah, well, personal, yeah. but I'm still okay with people having, you know, the freedom to choose between that up to like a certain range. That's what I'm saying. Just like the first trimester that, and the second trimester. You'd first we'll have a whole abortion yeah. discuss, discussion sure. top of this. I think it would be funny like me. <laughs> suffice suffice <laughs> to say the Democrats were trying to, they're always trying to one-up each other on that and every issue. It's weird, like to the point where Bernie now doesn't seem so extreme. <laughs> It's like fifteen dollars an hour. No, I I've been saying twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> That's a good accent. Yeah, <laughs> really good. I like Bill De Blasio's one better. He's like, I'm I've been raising a kid for like twenty one years. I'm a black kid. Yes. Like years. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> good for you, sir. <laughs> good for you. You want a cookie? Courage, <laughs> like, hero. My sir. father has a deer stand. I know something about guns. <laughs> right. Whenever they put equity or justice on any topic you know it's about to take they're about to take it to the most radical turn that they possibly can and and they're gonna wrap it up in so much emotion and they're gonna try to make it a position where if you were to oppose it you look like evil even say, though it's um, completely wrong i think joe biden's one was the most emotional like touched the nerve i was like oh my grandfather went to war and he got died from the you know b- broken mind the broken body oh de blasio lost the leg oh, yeah, yeah, was, was this lazio yeah, 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 yeah whatever yeah. that was no, the same people that was uh, yeah. uh, ironically that was like one of the most anti-war statements that was made like uh, during both debates Wait, yeah but didn't biden have one too he's like oh my son or was it was it his father or like his son but he's like oh someone went to war they came back with like cancer no joe biden's like, son like, died for a lot of other kamala harris always seemed like she's about to break out in tears when she talks though it's just like like trying to always make it personal which is great you, you go for like the gut you know the right. what, the pathos effect and she's really good at that so she's also talking about like how people work three jobs and don't have enough to like feed their family in their homes like 
I don't really believe any of that nonsense. Uh, again, most of the people who have uh, more than minimum wage, the, the amount of people who work or have minimum wage is like less than 4%. All right, so people are making more than a minimum wage. Uh, working uh, three jobs and you can still support your family, I think that's kind of impossible. I mean, you, I'd imagine you have a husband and you guys are also working together, right? Um, well, now if you go in our generation, like millennial generation, you know, marriages aren't happening. So those people buy, probably buy themselves, single mothers. Mm. Marriages aren't happening. That's another good topic. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the stuff he's talking about, I think there's also someone who is talking about, um, uh, I guess, not just uh, holding, what was she said? She wants to use the executive order to oppose the Second Amendment was another gun <sighs> issue she brought up. Who was that? Who Her, was same person, Kamala Harris. Oh. Yeah. Well, she was uh, she was a prosecutor. I'm pretty sure. So she thinks that uh, executive power is how to solve every single problem. A lot of presidents think that. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> the history of president, presidency, right? Like, There's more but she's a prosecutor, so she thinks right. that yeah, it's like oh, well, and she's she's put tons of people in jail for victimless crimes. I like how she pointed career. out Biden saying like, you know, you've done like this. I'm not saying you're a racist. But these bus things and these legislations is like, what about you at this? If uh, he had any courage, he would have been like, well, how many people are sitting in jail right now? Because <laughs> he should have said your, that. Whoa. Someone sort of like primed him for a good response to her. Yeah, if he had courage, he would have been like, oh yeah, I do it. I did oppose bus things. You know, I don't, I don't think it makes any sense. No, well, screw it. Everybody he opposed it. <laughs> it's like at some point, everybody realized it wasn't working. It wasn't accomplishing what they thought. I was the first generation of this that, was, that got on a bus to go to school. I was like, oh, whoa, that's so great. More Harris. emotional <laughs> appeals. <laughs> right. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, question here. Um, Michael Bennett, he was talking about income inequality. What's wrong with income inequality? Is there anything wrong with income inequality? It makes it seem like, uh, what's the other statement? Like, there's enough money. Well, I wouldn't the want my income to be forced to be equal with everybody else's. All right. Because everywhere else in the world makes a whole lot less money than uh, people in the U.S. There is, uh, who is the right. one saying that there's enough money in this country uh, and that no one's getting uh, their fair amount? Plenty of money oh, in this well. country is just in the wrong hands. That was by <sighs> de Blasio. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of country. It's just not I'd say he's probably reference. right. All the all the money in government hands is definitely in the wrong hands. Because, <laughs> right. you know, they're leeches. Tax the leeches. Radical one. Yeah, I mean, don't right. they control like a third of the GDP or, or you know, yeah, so it's... Right. Mean shit. Right. Just rent number to pretend top number, yeah. to do things. <laughs> but de Blasio was the most radical one. Like, every time I heard him, it's like, we gotta, we gotta unite as a party and with the workers. And everything we're gonna do is gonna be like how we did the, you know, civil rights movement, the women's movement, the labor movement. Like, so we're gonna have this giant movement of people doing things. I mean, it was crazy. He's uh, not well liked in New York, I've heard. He's not. I've been, I just went to New York City recently. The place is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right. like they, the world country. Yeah. they hate him. So it's you wonder like what this guy's. That's just why like I'm always confused about politics. People choosing to run for office. I, I'm like, man, don't you have some skeletons in the closet that <laughs> you're worried about? And like because just the average person, I assume there's something wrong in their life. And so de Blasio, with as much as is wrong as with his life, is just not dissuaded at all. He's like, no, nope, I'm going to do this. put the spotlight right on me. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you have someone like Ken Cuccinelli or something like that. Um, or you have uh, Mr. Uh, Wiener sent dick pics to these <laughs> people. Uh, and like their wife's still having like successful political careers going Wait, on there. Ken Cuccinelli? Would, would well, no, you... Ken Cuccinelli, I think she, he married like... I don't know, knocked up like a 15-year-old or something like that. Whoa, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, is that Joe Morrison? Or Joe Morrison, yeah, yeah. Ken Cuccinelli right, is right, like right, the right, conservative yeah, yeah. Republican guy. <laughs> the guy from like Petersburg, kids. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joe, yeah there's huh. another guy. Right. He's the perfect guy, a uh, local Richmond area politician. He's been in, in, in and out of every single thing. He's been in jail for like three months or something. And he, yeah, he had a relationship with a 17-year-old girl who was working at his law firm. And... Uh, that, that blossomed into like five children and a marriage, but he spent three years or three months in jail because of it. So he got charged, and right. yet he still ran for he won the in nomination, Petersburg right? And won, yeah. Well, I mean, I think Wild. So he I should. Think. He obviously like moved on to the relationship with this person. He understands consent. He. Why was he? Demonized for this victimless crime, right? Right. That's, that's a good point. At least he married her, and Five yeah. Years later. Um, 
Yeah, what were you gonna say? I, I, yeah, I was gonna say that. Uh, when it comes to like the sins in the closet, I think it's like it's kind of <laughs> like how Trump did it. Ooh, I think it was on the I can't remember who it was, but it was, they talked about it on Joe Rogan podcast. Like, you know, Trump has all this shit that would uh, torpedo any other president, you know, candidate, and he's just like, yeah, I did that, and you know, and that's it. And I think that's what a lot of people are gonna do. It's like, yeah, he's like, oh, you know, I, I did that. It's like, you know, it's whatever. Like I was, I was reading how someone. Uh, made a post on Facebook. They're like, "Oh, if I was black and I had someone accuse me of rape, you know, I'd be torpedoed." But like Trump did it, and he's just like, "You know, I didn't, I didn't have sex with her. She was too ugly. You know, I didn't want to do that. She's not even my type." He said that. But yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, well, being black doesn't mean because like with Justin Fairfax, he got accused by two different women." Now I, just, I was reading this morning. He's like, "Oh, I'm going to run for governor." I'm like, "Oh, it's the same thing. It's the state shame. version of the yeah. president." So I'm like, no "Doesn't really mean she just got to be like, yeah, I did that." <laughs> what are you gonna do now? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess unless they have a photo of him do, in the act, right? It's not gonna be. I don't know. I mean, it's not gonna be much. <laughs> I feel like still people will just be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Well, it's it's modern times on the internet. Everybody's dirts <laughs> in a certain way, kind of out there. Yeah, we're all and, screwed in some way. Yeah. Maybe this but is the best all, thing for government. Is all right, that there we go. No one will run for office, <laughs> and we won't have to deal. The illusion is kind of lifted. Oh, as man, I don't know about that. I feel like that would just that's just going to mean that the standard for what we judge is bad. The the bar is going to get lower. And <laughs> Somebody who's never had a Facebook will have to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, Some Amish dude in Pennsylvania. Right. No, no, <laughs> no win. <laughs> so who do you think uh, won... Uh, well, I guess out of the, the first debate. First debate? Well, uh, my personal opinion is Tulsi Gabbard. She, I heard that she, her Google searches or her searches went through the roof. roof. Mm-hmm. Like everybody was trying to figure out who it was. I read articles from you know, the mainstream media that there was uh, trolls and bots on uh, Twitter. That Russian were, bots. Right, yeah. Oh, yay. Those, that's always what it is when uh, a candidate that, is uh, unorthodox comes about. That's a keep... gray scapegoat. Yeah, once once a Democrat is elected, that is the last. That is the last you will hear about Russian <laughs> anything <laughs> ever. It will be that will be over completely. Oh, yep. Pretty much. <laughs> what about the second one? I well, first I think for the first one, I think um, Elizabeth Warren won just because she uh, didn't lose. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, again, she's center of the stage. She's uh, not going to be throwing any hardcore questions, and no one was attacking her like the way they're like beating up on Beto. She um, got the most time too, I think. Right, but I couldn't. I, I had to look. They yeah. they already know it's going to be between her and Biden, uh, and that's going to be like the top ten, top two, you know, final two, whatever countdown, and see where it goes from there. Um, I think uh, it's everything else. Like you know, like there's some people who didn't get any much time. Or talking at all. There's some people I've never even heard of. And like they always spoke like maybe I don't know twice or something like that. You know, some people with four or five, four minutes, three minutes, six minutes. Like, did, right. did, did, oh, like why are they even there? I guess not the wrong video. there's money in these campaigns. People get a lot of money and mm-hmm. they have their own kind of political ambitions and makes them look good to show that they're mm-hmm. having on stage to kind of run. So it's another platform for them. I mean, we haven't mentioned our ANCAP queen, uh, Marianne Williamson. Who was the other no name person on the second night? That's very true. Um, she was the. Is that the one that was a spiritual advisor for <laughs> Oprah? She was yes. the one of the far oh, left. What? No or way. Something. She was on the far left, and wow. she was the one who was like Boom, the um, the lady. She was like telling the president of New Zealand. She was like, "You, yo, girlfriend, I'm gonna make sure that you are so on or something like it was." What? Yeah, it, it's just like uh, slay queen comments. It was the most <laughs> cringy moment in the debate. By far. But she had another good comment where she said that when Trump or anybody in government commits a crime, it's still a crime. That was a, I was going to bring that up. Right. right. So saying that if the government does it, does it, it doesn't make it any less of a crime. State sponsor crimes in regards to kidnapped children, it's the same thing. Wow. Um, Great. You know, well, hopefully she can hold that consistently. Yeah, apply that I doubt like it. Public school. Yeah, doubt. <laughs> Press X for doubt. Uh, <laughs> What about like public schools? You know, these kids get um, sent to jail if they kind of miss truancy or even the parents, you know. Uh, but, you know, you won't find that consistency anywhere else. It's usually just uh, for foreigners, other people, other cultures, they seem to have more reverence for than uh, their own here. And uh, I think that's kind of messed up. Again, it's kind of the whole thing why everyone just started speaking Spanish for no reason coming out of nowhere. Uh, it's like, who are, what pre- who are you running presidency for? Also, Dave Smith pointed this out. He said, uh, do they not think that the average person watching this debate 
can understand English because there's only this like small portion of the debate that's actually being said in Spanish. So it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. Like, why would you watch if you were just waiting for them to start speaking? A right. little tiny bit of Spanish during the entire debate. She was so stupid. I, I showed one of the guys in my work. I think it was uh, a work that was talking. He's like, "This dude just speaking like bullshit." And I was just like, "Oh, well, I, that's what I thought." <laughs> and I was, I was like, "Yeah, well, I don't see the point." I, di- I didn't see the. So point. who won the second debate? What were we going to say? Yeah, who won the second debate? Um, everyone's getting up on Biden. Mm-hmm. They got to knock him out. He's a contender. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the internet polls look at Yang, but only because they think his mic was cut, was cut off. Um, I mean, for me, I, I, I did like uh, Marianne for what she said. Um, but that was about it. I mean, it's really, I mean, there's going to be more debates coming up, but I guess eventually some of these people are going to be knocked out, I imagine. Some of them, most of them are going to be knocked them, out. Right? Most of them are terrible. I think my favorite for the second debate was Gillibrand, because I know if she wins, she's not going to get anything done, because everyone's going to hate her. She she was a, the most annoying person out of that whole thing. She just kept talking yeah. over other people. And she's like, she wasn't even saying She really took that, advantage of the format. I couldn't believe it. she didn't say she anything that was run. worth it, but she just kept talking and talking. I'm just like, who are you again? Yeah, what? Um, I thought we haven't mentioned Pete Buttigieg. Yeah, Buttigieg or whatever. <laughs> he actually sounded uh, kind of serious, like a serious person. So many of these people sound like goofballs. I mean, well, after you're done listening to Marianne Williamson, you're it's it's not too hard he to lost sound. Most seriousness legit. when he started off as saying "Buenas noches, muchachos." <laughs> <laughs> first, first sentence came out of his mouth. I was like, "Here we go." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, he kind of knew his a little bit, and um, I don't know. It, who, who do you think is going to win the nomination? Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. like. Just who's gonna go up against record, Trump? Huh? Who's gonna get oh, r- <laughs> create all this uh, meme <sighs> fodder that we're gonna enjoy? I predict Kamala Harris really? will be the nominee because she showed that she's willing to get after Biden. She's uh, willing to get after anybody, and she's right. a woman of color. This is the ideal that the Democrats are looking for. They can't have another Bernie or a or a, a Biden. Uh, and she's a woman with no deer stand, but you yeah, a white guy. that's what you're saying. You don't want a white guy, right? That's, that, that's not that's not a winning. She's going to beat Elizabeth Warren. Oh, man. Yeah, mm. she's a prosecutor. She's tough. Ooh, well, Castro. I mean, he was really going after a lot of people, especially with that he's one law. <laughs> no one wants. No, nobody like wants a president Castro. I, I can't tell how tall he is, but <laughs> he looked really short next to De Blasio. <laughs> Of course, everybody probably does. <laughs> she's like tall. Like, I think it might be Elizabeth Warren uh, at the end of it. She's got all the clouds. She's going to make sure no one's going to throw her any hard balls. No one's going to attack her. I think she's just going to coast right through uh, all of this. And a lot of people are thinking... Um, uh, she's going to get the Hillary treatment? Yeah, she's definitely going to get Hillary <laughs> A lot of people are thinking of um, Sanders, but nobody wants to repeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he already kind of sold out when he kind of said, well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll nominate Hillary. Right. And after, like, having the whole thing stolen from him. He's not a, yeah, he's not a tough guy. He's not willing to shred his opponents like Trump will. Yeah. I think he's been talked up a lot by the Democratic Socialists Ooh, on Twitter, but on nobody else really your, likes him. I'm on board with your pick. Warren would get shredded by Trump. Kamala is mm. the Hillary. She's the Hillary this year, I think, I maintain. She mm. she's kind of a pants a suit, hawk. like yeah. yeah, right, like no fucking nonsense, uh, down to business, yeah, cut isn't, throat. Isn't yeah. she disliked in the area that she's from? Isn't she like from like San Francisco or something? Is that both people don't already don't like her, kinda. Oh, <laughs> she's a prosecutor, man. Well, yeah, but I'm on, I'm on California. She's from California. I think it's weird with all this healthcare stuff that everyone wants to give away, but we we're all fined for it when. It was demanding that we have health care. If we didn't, we get fined, right? Taxed. And now all of a sudden, they're giving it away to Legal foreigners. Limits. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, so will they find them? Right. <laughs> if, they, if they're here one day and then they leave the next, do, do we just get to tax them for the <laughs> remainder of their lives? All right. Well, California's doing it. They brought it back. Like they're actually doing the, we're going to tax you, with pay for legal immigrants, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. I think Trump was licking his lips at a lot of that stuff. That's his main <laughs> issue. I mean, that's his... And I think it's a popular issue, regardless of how you might feel about um, immigration. Like, the average, I think, American doesn't really want more immigration. Right. 
Yeah, no, that's very true. I mean, you have all these old videos like Obama touting you know, like closed border policy. See, he what deported what, what twenty million or something like that, or one point two million. Uh, uh, Obama did, deported? Yeah, Obama. A lot, a lot. Yeah, a in lot, the millions. Yeah, yeah. three million. Yeah. Um, so it's not like uh, now all of a sudden they want to forget none of that happened and none of them ever advocated for that stuff. Debates, I think. Uh, well, well, now, yeah, but in the past, oh, yeah. it was an entire different oh, well, story. Yeah. About They're being story. more objective than they ever have before because the information's more accessible than it ever has been before. People right. know now. now they're too open about it like they're too woke so i was, I was just I was, like when they were in the debate they were saying how all you know all the metrics we do the stock market doesn't represent how how people's lives are in america and people aren't doing as well i'm like yeah but these are the exact same you know statistics and data that we use under obama i guess i like throw them under the bus i made a i was talking about that i was like you know you know they just like just they screwed him because they just they just like admitted that everything we did over his time, didn't amount to anything. So, yeah, everything's been terrible since like 1974. So like every president since then has been terrible. Even your God King, I mean, it's kind of. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Obama at home, like, oh these motherfuckers, they just screwed me. <laughs> I do like how like their go-to example, like how where are they going to get all this money from? It's like always oh, the rich. It's like well, the, you know, the top percent, like the, these top, top people. It's like well, yeah, the top one percent pays about like 37 percent of their lot. share of like fourth share of income taxes. Uh, top 10 percent pays. Uh, 70%, like 69.4% of uh, income taxes. Like, they pay a lot. Like, this, this weird myth saying, like, they don't pay anything. Like, they pay a ton. They pay most of uh, the income tax that's required. Uh, so I think it's uh, a weird thing that they keep bringing this up over and over again. It's not just the income tax. All the other tax. I mean, like, uh, everything like, else, right. The that buy a, a jet sales tax is probably off the charts. Like you look at, uh, like they say, like Amazon. It's like, well, Amazon does pay taxes. And sales tax, yes. all the stuff they have to buy. There's ta Everything gets taxed on the production line uh, that goes along the way. They're paying taxes for their employees for Social Security and all this sort Medicare of stuff, right? Medicare. Well, right. it's all compounding. And that's the government or the people that are advocating for more tax they don't want to look at how your tax on every single part of the every part chain of the transaction each part that comes into there that has a tax on it when they're all put together you get another tax when it's assembled all of this and they just ignore all of that yeah. it's like oh you didn't build that you know you just put it together. You uh, you have to pay every step of the way. Well, I think a lot of people are just ignorant. I mean, they don't know what a business happens in a business. They don't even care. They'll say anything. Right. Uh, anyone else says it. I'm curious to look yeah. at what if any of these candidates were ever business owners before they were candidates. Yang was. He was an entrepreneur. I still don't like him. <laughs> what, <laughs> what sort of entrepreneur? I, mean, I don't know. He started some. He was kind of a tech, business. IT oh. tech. Uh, you know, like a, one of those San Francisco type okay. companies, but yeah. Yeah. you know. The, they're so um, they're insulated, and a lot of those those companies. I mean, they have these strong relationships with government. It's one of these things where people will throw that at you as a libertarian. They'll say, "Well, um, you know, Google is a private company, <laughs> and do you support what they do? You know, to right. everybody I when they do. stuff." <laughs> 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 I mean that's a whole different discussion, and where you find out like the what right. the Veritas uh, project, uh, oh, where they, project right? right. Uh, yeah, they Ooh, showcased yeah. that uh, Google has been uh, skewing skewing the uh, search results, right? I mean, it's uh, sure it's their company, but like yeah, but I can have an opinion about their company and right. say that it sucks, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are like, well, it's private property. Yeah, we get that, but I could also mm -hmm. have voice my opinion that say that's a horrible thing, right? Like Teach people alternatives and right. advocate for alternatives and advocate they don't get any more government contracts All right uh we're closing up to our hour here uh i guess any last comments you guys want to say about this i think it's kind of weird that a, a lot of these debates with democrats i find like there's nothing of substance there's there's nothing of logic anymore that they can try to sway people there's nothing of uh of any kind of weird persuasion the only thing they have now to persuade us is what they can bribe give or you. bribe you with, bribe you with. right that is weird. That's like some uh, kindergarten like principal, sort of like kid running for president. Like, oh, I'll make sure everyone gets a free soda at the end of the day from these <laughs> vending machines, and everyone will have Reese's uh, twice a day. <laughs> and uh, like, that's kind of where it comes down to. Promising uh, a lot of stuff that they can't, that they don't own. Right. right. No, we can't pay for. Yeah, it. I think my main comment about these is just that to watch. Well, another part we didn't really mention was just the the way that the moderators try to throw out these softball questions, not challenge them at all, 
and uh, very different from what they would do with Trump. I mean, they were that was his like sworn enemy, you know, their sworn right. enemy. So it's kind of uh, it's pretty glaring, especially when you have Antifa running around, like what you know with Charlottesville and everything. That that was definitely asked of Trump, like right. you're responsible for the Charlottesville. Well, what about Antifa beating up this Andy No guy? Uh, uh, gay Asian uh, reporter and uh, or Vietnamese, I think, uh, in Portland. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, just in time for the closing days of uh, Pride Month. Pride right. Month. Right. Of course. Yeah. Boom. Uh, but that's not going to get all the attention. You know, uh, you put all the attention on um, this hate crime of a smullet and say that there is an attack that happened and, and it never did. Right. And it'll go on for days until it ha- uh, until the truth comes out and the media is quiet. But here's, uh, I would say, uh, another attack, uh, a hate crime. Caught on video. Caught on video. Right. In broad daylight. Um, but n- no comment. Right. Even even if the attackers were white, white and Tifas, Right. Because you could see some of them throwing stuff at him. Yep. Uh, and you can say maybe motivated hate attack, but no, you can, you, they kind of fall on the left spectrum. So you know, there's not going to be much of uh, attention given to that, and it's going to be kind of swept under the rug and kind of ignored. Yeah, that's very sad. That's a, that's a rough video to watch. It's beating them up. Yeah, which is like taking photos. Just, just uh, yeah, just recording, journalizing. Uh, yeah. I think this is an obvious showing how the media is failing. These debates, the structure of it. It's uh, people can barely get. We're moving away from the soundbite culture, I feel mm-hmm. like. I feel like more long-form discussion is really what it's coming to. Podcast anybody stuff. anybody can uh, hook up their microphone and say what they think. It's easier than ever before. Yeah. So I feel like uh, this can move us in a positive direction, away from like uh, this mainstream media that's not very good. People can't really have a dialogue and... I think that the media is lashing out. This is why they ignore the serious things that are going on when there are actual threats to people trying to show information out there. It's no doubt that Antifa is a very violent organization and uh, they should be stopped or a big light should be shed on them to show that they are not acting in good faith. They don't want to have a discussion. They just want to force their views upon everybody. When are they going to be, uh, you know, have the same kind of review that they're a terrorist organization as well or a hate group, right? Never. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and to your credit, what you mentioned, yeah, I think there is there is a trend towards like podcasting and stuff like that because you find CNN losing millions of dollars, <laughs> losing tons of viewership. They had to close up offices in England. Uh, I think it's a sign that uh, people are seeing this stuff as real fake news and looking elsewhere for uh, real good information. Um, so with that, I think uh, it was a fun libertarian crusader podcast I, I episode. Was screwed. <laughs> give my final opinion. I mean, okay. no, tell me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, in the in the end, we're still screwed because one of these people, one of these people are going to beat Trump. I mean, that's a hundred percent guarantee. There's really, no, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Take of the episode. There, there's no way. I'll bet you ten dollars. <laughs> okay, I'll take that bet. <laughs> I'll give you another. I'll give you another silver coin. It's on camera. <laughs> I, hope, I hope betting's legal in Virginia. Man, it's a hundred percent fact. Trump is going to win because, like, I was just reading how they were. Wait, saying, the Trump is going to win? No, the Trump. Well, Trump's going to lose. My okay, bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, Trump's going to lose. Bet. But he's 100% going to lose. In 2020. Yeah, Trump's going to lose, gonna lose of course, in 2020. Of course. Of course. Okay. What are you gonna, what are you, why are you shocked by that? Well, there's no way he's uh, going to win. I mean, they, like I was saying, they would, I was just reading an article talking about how they're saying that Trump's economy looks just like Obama's economy. You know, nothing's different. That, but that's one of the reasons why Trump won. You know, he's supposed to make the economy better. He's supposed to do this. You know, it's one of the reasons why, you know, Hillary didn't win because she would continue doing the exact same thing Obama did. And people are kind of figuring out that, you know, he was a mistake. But it's like, how, if it, the, the economy is, is in recession already. And we're going to, by the time, 2020 happens when it's november people are gonna be voting they're like okay the country's pretty screwed up in terms of economics and we're we're going off a cliff actually we're off a cliff already so i mean there's no way he's gonna be like yeah you know i made america great america's great it's the best country in the history keep of it great let's yeah. keep america. Let's keep, keep, keep america it great great. <laughs> <laughs> whatever slogan he uses now is on mock anymore so at some point you want i mean you want somebody who's who's the president to have to take credit for when it does collapse. When yeah, he's going to take credit for it. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be 10, 20 years of but unending misery. What if, what if that only happens uh, before the, the elections? And so he'll be able to coast it through, and then it happens afterwards, and then, you know. I, was not gonna, I, don't, I don't think it's going to happen. You think it's going to happen that soon? I, I, I think by 
at least November by voting time, people are gonna be people are gonna be like figured out that the economy is pretty jacked up mm. because you know at the end of this year the Fed's going back to you know quantitative easings, going back to zero percent interest rates. You know, even yeah. even next month they have to cut interest rates because the markets expect that stuff to happen. And the whole reason the economy has been like, oh, the, the, you know, all last year the economy was failing. You know, everything was going down, housing market was going down, auto market, stock market, and the only reason it stopped because the Fed said, you know, they're, they're gonna go back to printing money and go back to zero percent interest rates. Mm. Now that if that stuff doesn't happen, we go right back to it. But if it does happen, the economy is gonna like turn into uh, it's gonna turn into a black hole. So there's no way Trump can spin a black hole. He's gonna be spinning into it. <laughs> he's gonna go right in. <laughs> like he's doing, man. He's gonna contract like this. He's doing. Uh, there he That's an it. entire episode well, right there yeah. on the interest rate and Fed. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. We have a bet. Uh, to see who wins. I'll bet all of you. I'll take all of you on. <laughs> I'll take all of you on. All right. <laughs> and uh, thanks for listening. This is our episode of Libertarian Crusaders. This is Kamal Nay. Stay liberated. Get off my property. Bang. <laughs> oh, I got it. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs>